how can we develop the growth mindset? This is the exact question, inshallah, that we try, that we aim to answer in part two of nurturing the growth mindset. Let's think of it this way. This episode is the action plan to develop the growth mindset. You know, this is very important because Islam emphasizes that beneficial knowledge must be followed by actions. Imam Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he once said something really profound. He said, knowledge and action are twins whose mother is high aspiration. Ignorance and idleness are also twins whose mother is laziness. Subhanallah. And a few days ago, I stumbled upon a quote by Bruce Lee, which echoed what Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said. Knowing is not enough. We must apply. Willing is not enough. We must do. So brothers and sisters, it is time for us to do. Let us push through the mundane activities and go through the uncomfortable feelings together. Inshallah, hopefully we will develop a new perspective on life by having the growth mindset. Bi-ithnillahi ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, once again, this is the Barakah Effect podcast, the weekly podcast that discusses the Quran and the Sunnah, that dissects the Quran and the Sunnah to extract gems, to extract tools and mindsets, to apply them in our daily lives, inshallah. We do hope that you find benefit in this episode and we do hope you enjoy it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa barakallahu fikum. Walau anna ahla al-Quran amanu wa attaqaw la fatahna alayhim barakatim من السماء والأرض If I may add something um, to, to the how of how we can actually grow, uh, have this growth mindset, right? So one of the things that uh, Dr. Carol Dweck mentioned in, in her talk, uh, she, someone asked her, what are specific behaviors that one can do to get oneself on the road to a growth mindset, right? Mm. So she, she said that, uh, three things, but the last thing is what I wanted to highlight. Uh, the last thing, the, the last um, behavior that one can inculcate in themselves is by monitoring fixed mindset triggers, she said. She said. So mm. uh, she said that try to listen to the fixed mindset voice, you know, don't, uh, when, 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 you, when you listen to yourself, you will, you will, you will have this, you know, sometimes, uh, oh, I don't like this. Uh, oh, she, she's better than me. Oh, she's, he's better than me. I don't like this. So have that awareness, right? So this is what basically she's saying. Monitoring fixed mindset triggers is uh, tantamount to having aware, self-awareness. Mm. Okay, so self-awareness is very important because if you don't know that you have a fixed mindset, how, how on earth will you change your mindset into a growth mindset? How on earth will you have that paradigm shift? What are the yeah. symptoms? I mean... How to identify this? I think so. So, yeah. um, so, so what? What I'm getting at is this: in 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 the Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala he he said in Quran in Surah Taha, uh, "Ma huwa, uh, sorry, uh, he said in Surah Taha, "Wa in tajhar bil uh, bil qawli fa innahu yalamu sirra wal wa akhfa." And if you speak aloud, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Then indeed he, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, knows the secret and what is even more hidden." So let us see, what is more hidden than a secret? <laughs> what, what, what might that be? So Ibn Kathir, Ibn Kathir in his tafsir, he, he quoted uh, Abdahak, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the, the salaf. He said, a sir or secret is the talks that you have with yourself. And akhfa is, uh, um, akhfa in, in, in English means even more hidden. So something that is more hidden than a secret is what you haven't even talked about to yourself yet. So in the future, like you might have oh, this okay. self-talk, right? So Allah knows about that. Mm, and another, another quote that he, bought, uh, he brought is this, which I think is very profound. He said, he brought the quote by Sa'id bin Jubair, uh, rahimahullah ta'ala, another, another uh, predecessor. So Sa'id, Sa'id bin Jubair, he said, regarding that ayah, uh, as-sirru wal akhfa, uh, as-sirru wa akhfa, Secret and what is more, even more hidden is ma huwa amiluhu mimma lam yuhadith mimma lam yuhadith bihi nafsahu. Akhfa, even more hidden, means something that is done by man without even being conscious or aware about it. 
of it without having the intention of doing it in the first place. So oh, how, how does this connect? Yes, yeah, some Is subconscious uh, subconscious actions or subconscious okay. things that you say, right? So how okay. does this tie to you know um, having that self awareness? Because some scholars they mention they highlight that one of the reasons why Allah Subhanahu wa Taala even mentioned this, right? Uh, uh, this this ayah, one of the one of the many hikmah, one of the many uh, um, you know um, uh, hidden hidden gems Wisdom, in this wisdoms. The, uh, wisdoms in this this ayah is that uh, to know is this to know that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows all of your secrets and what's more hidden than your secret practically means you knowing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and His attributes because when you know that Allah knows everything. That also, uh, that also starts you on a path to know Him more than that. You know, you don't just know Allah by knowing that Allah is Al Alim, Allah is Al Khabir. But you know, you you will also want to know that Allah is Al Halim, Allah is Al Rahim, Allah is the most um, uh, Allah is most gentle, Allah is most merciful. Right? You you know about Him. So what does that uh, ensue? When you know about Him, you will remember Him night and day. You will remember Him during. During your uh, tough times and during your uh, the, the times of need and also the times of uh, you know relaxation and uh, um, you know uh, the times that you don't have to struggle, right? So, uh, so this is the this is the takeaway point. And only by knowing Him, and then remembering uh, and then remembering Allah day and night, will Allah open doors for you to be self-aware. And this is an important ingredient uh, if we want to embark on a growth mindset, like I said before, right? To have the self awareness, because what in another ayah in Surah Al Hashr, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala He said, "Wala taqoonu kaladin nasulah fa ansahum anfusahum wala ulaika humul fasikun." And do not be like those. Allah is uh, Allah is uh, Allah is um, uh, uh, warning us here. Do not be like those who forgot Allah. So He made mm. themselves. So He made them forget forget about themselves. Mm. So it is when. Mashallah. So it is when you remember Allah night and day. It is when That's you know when about Him. It is when, there, that, that is when you will know about yourself. That is when you will uh, Allah will open doors for you to actually be self-aware. That, okay, I'm not doing. Then, then you will know. If just try this, just learn about Allah and just have vikr, daily vikr. You have a point oh. times in days to have, for example, the morning and evening adhkar. Just do it every day and understand its meanings. Understand the names of Allah. Understand Him, who mm. who He who He really is, and then you will see. One day you will say to yourself, "I have not been. I have not been giving my children their rights. I have not uh, give, been giving, you know, my parents, parents. my the rights mm. that they deserve." So this is the point here. Remember Allah, then you will have that self awareness. Yes, Manala, you know you triggered something very important the, about understanding the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. How can we relate that to us? When you know that Allah Azza wa Jal still provides for the disbelievers, even though they claim that He has a son, and mm. in Surah Maryam says Allah is so angry at this that the skies are about to break. You know, yeah. like He's very angry, but still He gives them respite and provides for them. Mm. And 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 you know, in the Hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that the the Prophet uh, Allah Azza wa Jal would hate to throw his slaves into the fire more than a mother would hate to throw her infant child into the fire. So. Yeah. You relate this back to you in terms of self awareness, like why am I so quick to not forgive people? Why mm-hmm. am I so judgmental to people? People have worse crimes, and Allah give to them. So these are some aspects on how we can assess, like this self awareness. Oh, I have a gap in that, and also to build on this point about self awareness. And this is something I find very important to me in in in, in growing in developing in my in my my own growth mindset. It's to admit our faults. Yeah, it's so yeah, something that's, that's I really important. struggled with. Like yeah. when people said, "Like, oh, bro, you are like this." Oh, I got defensive, man. I like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> But if you do that, like, you're blocking the means to improve. It's only when you start admitting and you're like, "Oh, wow, yeah, that's that's a good point." Like, if you especially have that, especially with the hum- wife. Especially with the wife. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> when your wife points, your when your husband points yeah. out something, when your parents point out something, you feel the urge, like, eh. Hey, Yeah, How about yeah. you? You're not that great, like you know. <laughs> We have that instinct, but Subhanallah, if yeah. you do that, that's a hallmark of a fixed mindset. So it's really about like understanding. F- fine, I, I, my humanity is I have weakness here. I'm working on it. Uh, so this is the different way to 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 approach and to look at self awareness. 
Because I, I think that point is uh, this self awareness also is something about feedback, yeah. So feedback you can either get it from self retrospect, uh, yeah. self introspection, mm. or external um, feedback, right, from your yes. mm. family members and so on. Yeah? Because sometimes like uh, uh, people like fixed mindset, they they tend to take feedback as criticism. Yes. Whereby correct. criticism is actually it's a gift. Yes. It's actually a gift. Uh, of course, if it's not being done, if it's done pr- correctly, yeah, with proper mm. ethics. I mean, uh, if somebody t- tells you this in in a, in a very derogating. Uh, Uh, manner, then of course you you have to step back. There's no point listening. Uh, but if it's done in the correct manner, yeah, uh, that is a gift. Because number one, it 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 make you realize that you are actually just a a, a servant, a, a slave of Allah that actually has nothing. That all goodness that you have is actually from Allah. Mm-hmm. So you it comes to realize that how weak you are, and so that's a gift. Anything that brings you closer to Allah, that's a gift. Take it like that in, in that mindset. So you'll be more calm to accept to accept criticism. Yeah. And you'll be more, uh, more open to to feedbacks and and room for improvement. So I like that. It's a paradigm Shalom. shift. Instead of saying taking it as a personal attack, take it like, oh, mashallah, this is something good for me for my akhirah. Mm. Yeah. Mashallah, mm. mashallah, it's amazing. I mean, it's something that can change the way you look at criticism, and that will help you grow, right? Mashallah. Yes. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, uh, something triggered. Um, I mean, about about this, when when you actually have that uh, start on the journey to have that growth mindset, right? It will trigger other people as well. Mm. It will trigger other people as well to 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 actually start this journey, mm. uh, right? For for like, example, just 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 a simple uh, example, like for example, for example, brother Faisal, he started on this journey, right? And he actually grouped us together, and that actually made me wanted to you know, wow, mashallah, this yeah. this journey is something else. So it it made me want to. Oh, you mean the podcast, start, the the podcast, yeah, the, 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 ah, the podcast. Okay. Mashallah. Yeah, and yeah, and even in, and even the 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 weekly halakats in 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 Miri last time, right? We, okay. we usually do it. So that triggered something in me that I have never previously thought that I could be doing in the future. So, mashallah, and and uh, this is this is I think this is one of sunnatullah. Sunnatullah meaning like uh, the. Uh, the the rules the laws that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has placed on the universe, mm. whereby when you do something, when you do something for the sake of Allah, Allah will reward you with something, and that's why the ulama they say al jaza min jinsil amal. He said the reward is similar to the deed itself. So that's why uh, in in the in the ayah that I mentioned, wala takunu kaladi nasulah fa ansahum anfusahum. When mm. when a person when people start to forget Allah, then Allah will make them forget about themselves. Ooh. So in in in, in many hadith, right? For example, uh, in many hadith, uh, for example, in I I forgot the matan, the text, but the hadith actually mentioned about if you actually if you actually help people or if you actually cover the the aib or the uh, other the faults of others in this world, Allah will cover your faults in the akhirah. Al jaza min jinsil amal. The reward is similar to the deed. So if you want to do something. If you want Allah to have mercy on you, have mercy on other people. And also, Ar Rahimuna Yarhamu Kumullah Fi Raa Ar Rahimuna Yarhamu Humur Rahman Yarhamu Man Fil Ardi Yarhamu Kum Man Fi Sama. The those who have mercy, those who are merciful to others, Allah will be merciful to them. So mm-hmm. make so be merciful to people, and you will be mercy. Uh, you will be you will be getting mercy from the one who is above the skies. So mm-hmm. this is just for us to you know. Uh, to, to put it in perspective, inshallah. Yeah, I want to build on that also, point uh, about that one that you said, like find good people that you can benchmark, right? I call this yeah. wor- worthy rivals. This ah. is the term that's used by uh, Simon Sinek in his book, The Infinite Game. And actually, this is human nature, yeah? When we find people who are uh, ahead of us, we also want to keep up with them. And when we don't have people who are ahead of us, that's when we start to stagnate and get complacent. That's why even Allah says, Allah con- actually instructs us, Sabiqu ila maghfiratim min rabbikum. Race with one another to mm. achieve the forgiveness of Allah, and in another ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, first tabiqul khairat, race towards goodness, right? Because what what is the point of this? I want to quote something from the Infinite Game. Simon Sinek says, "We choose them to be our worthy rivals, not because we want to defeat them, not because we want to win for them to lose, but because there's something about them that reveals to us our weakness and pushes us to continuously improve." 
Ah, that is a <laughs> so this is a very interesting point. That's why the Sahaba were the best generation because they had good benchmarks against each other. You can see it plastered all around Sirah. They were always competing towards one another. There was like one hadith they're saying, "Oh yeah, Rasulullah, it's not fair. The, the rich people give sadaqa. We uh. we poor people couldn't give sadaqa." So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Okay, I can tell you something which is even better than sadaqa." So he says, "After salah, after prayer." Say Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 times. So the companions are like, okay, 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 good, good, good. So they do. <laughs> and then they came back and complained, Ya Rasulullah, the rich guys heard about this hadith, they also make this zikir. And then Rasulullah SAW says, ذَلِكَ فَضُّ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِهِ مَا يَشَاءَ This is from the grace and mercy of Allah, He gives to whoever He wills. This shows you, even the rich guys were competing with these guys in terms of zikir. You know what I mean? Like, yes, the competition Allah. is mutual, you know, they, they keep on yeah. trying to outdo each other. And we all know the Mashallah. famous hadith about Omar, right? He, yeah. he saw like uh, Abu Bakr, uh, Abu Bakr wasn't even aware of this. Abu Omar was the one looking up to him. He's like, oh, this guy, okay. Today, I'm going to beat him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, okay, give sadaqah for the battle of, I think it was Tabuk, right? If I'm not mistaken, the battle of Tabuk or was it Hunain? I can't remember one of those battles. Mm-hmm. So Omar said, okay, today I'm going to beat Abu Bakr. So he came with half his wealth. Wow, it's a lot. And then, and then they're like, so Rasulullah SAW says, oh, how much have you left for your family? So Omar said, yeah, about this much as well. That means half of it's here. And then Abu Bakr came with some wealth. And then Rasulullah SAW asks, okay, so how much do you leave for your family? He says, I, I left for him, I left for Allah them, Allah, Allah and the messenger. MashaAllah. Meaning like 100%. Can you imagine oh. you empty your entire <laughs> bank account? So and Omar was like, I'm never going to beat this guy. But look at, the, look at the environment that they were in. They always had worthy rivals. And by the way, Omar was also one of the best Sahaba, right? Like there was no other person better than him than Abu Bakr than Rasulullah SAW. So he wasn't like, yeah, I'm still better than the rest of you lads, you know. <laughs> he didn't have that mindset. <laughs> he benchmark is always higher. And Abu Bakr, who was his benchmark? The Prophet, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you see like, our problem today is what? Uh, at least I pray, not like this guy. At least mm. I wear hijab, not like this sister. Ah, this is our problem today. We don't have our worthy rival. We always set our standards low. Like we always say like we're better. So this is the problem that we have. That's why it stifles our growth. So get back to an environment where you can put yourself in an environment that you can see people who are better than you. Volunteer for an organization that you can see people who are str- like st- striving towards good deeds. For us in the Barakah Effect, we try to keep this as an accountability partner, right? To measure up, okay, this guy is like this. Like, like Shami said, right? Okay, mashallah, this guy has this skill. This guy has this ability. Like, even in my head right now, I know that some of you are better than me in, uh, better than me in certain areas. I just secretly try to measure up to that. You know, so I just wanted to share Sahih. that. Sahih. I'd like to like same, tie, same, tie the, the point of uh, Brother Shami and Brother Faisal to, to one to, to similar points. Yeah. Like Brother Shami's point just now about, about aspiring one another. I think that's highlight the importance of da'wah, yeah, because giving good advice, good words of advice to your to your to, to, to other people. Because it's not just if you give da'wah, it's not just strengthen whatever you believe in and what, mm. what do you implement it, but also you share that goodness with other people. And like what Shami's mm. case is, inspire other people to do to do the same thing, yeah. Mm. And, and in yeah. Brother Faisal points, right? I think that's also very important to have that gold standard. Know what sort of gold standard you want to refer to. And there's no better gold standard that you can refer to than whatever Allah has, has tell us to follow. That is yeah. the gold standard that we should follow, right? Like, yeah, yeah mashallah. Though, mashallah. And, 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 and then the, the, the good thing about all these, all these uh, companions, the, the, the Pious Precessor, is the, what they, they, in, they emphasize a lot on, on the, the path, the journey, the manhaj. So that's without knowing what's the without knowing what's the end result. Sometimes they know the end result, but they pretend that like they don't know the end result. So it's always about ah, the journey and keep whatever on they keep, yeah, on keep on going. Yes. And, and they, yeah. even though they, they have a plan, they track their plan to uh, the, tra- the track goals to milestone in the journey instead of, our, uh, instead of ah, the end okay. result. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, what, what happens, it t- tends to happen is that when you achieve something, you're like, uh, what's the term for it? Like, oh, we did it. We achieved it. Mm. So you're like, oh, that's done. And I've seen this many hap- happen in many times mm. in people's lives. Like when they want to change, for example, they want to become a better Muslim, they start to pray, they start to wear hijab, for example. Uh, like they, they're, slowly they get better and better, but they don't change their benchmarks. You know what I mean? So they, oh. you, you need to readjust that benchmark. So maybe, you know, like you're competing with this guy and then, oh, maybe like uh, you're slightly better in what you see. Remember, perception is only limited. Huh? It's only what you know. Like maybe you're better in that sense. Oh, let's let's to go another benchmark right now. So I think all of us we need to try and have this benchmark. I, I have, for example, a benchmark of 
a brother who always comes early to the masjid. So my benchmark is, <laughs> if I reach the masjid before his car, mashallah. Okay, that's a good achievement. <laughs> <laughs> mashallah. mashallah. I, I have brothers who like uh, are excellent in memorization. So if I can like track, I, I try, memorize what he memorized a bit more, okay, mashallah. So like, let's try to have these kinds of benchmarks internally so that we know like we can outdo ourselves. Mm. And, and then the, 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 the benchmark, right? Mm -hmm. don't, don't tie that to human approval. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. very good. But uh, if they thank you, acknowledge that, uh, that, acknowledge that, but never let that sing into your head, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Just like Omar yeah. just now, right? He knows that Abu Bakr beats him, but he doesn't stop there, right? He keeps yeah. on continuing yeah. doing it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Because sometimes we, we see people, oh, he beats me. So, okay, okay I give up. I, I give yeah. up. Okay. This guy, different level. This guy, class. different level. Okay, not. But that's, that's something that's amazing from the seerah, which is not, um, we don't really derive that benefit when we read the seerah or we learn the seerah, you know? Oh, subhanallah, that's true. Something, yeah. an angle that we, may, maybe next time when we learn about the seerah, the, the life of the sahaba, look into how they try to compete with each other in goodness. Yeah, true. And, and try to emulate that and try to apply that in our, our lives. Yeah. And uh, perhaps that, that can be something, uh, uh, a positive thing for you as an inspiration for you. Because to me, it just occurred to me this thing. I mean, I don't really think of it when I, when I read the seerah. But now, when I think about it, mashallah, there's a lot of examples in that, in that area. So, yeah, it's, true, so it's amazing, mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> and one, one more how is, I'm a big believer of small steps. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, okay. we always overburden ourselves by thinking to be success. We must have this big change. We must yeah. have this instantaneous change. change. Yeah, true. Yeah, and true. I remember, I just love this hadith. Rasulullah said that Salah, Salah. you have. Salah, Salah. Uh, hold on, yeah. yeah. The Prophet says, make things easy and do not make th them difficult. And there are other hadith that you have been sent to make things easy you have not been sent to make things difficult. So I think this is a good hadith because we need to remember that we need to do the easy thing first before we go to the difficult, right? Mm. For example, public speaking, you don't have to go to the, the stage for the first time, right? Yeah, yeah Just try to go to, I mean, I've tried um, Toastmaster, but in uh, Malay. So that's where we get... Um, maybe some two, three audience first, then uh, you can upgrade, upgrade, upgrade from right. there. Right. Uh, mashallah. mashallah. Yeah, because you never know where suddenly you end up uh, once you make that small step. So, I mean, I, re I recall our conversations previously that, you know, the, the most difficult step is actually the first step, right? The first step, yes. The, the yes. flywheel, flywheel concept, right? right yeah. Ah, uh, you started yeah. the great, good to great reference first this time. Oh, <laughs> mashallah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, this, this is something that, that we always have to keep in mind, you know. Sometimes we look at things perhaps to make the single step is the most difficult thing. But actually, you just have to just, just do it and just not think too much and just yep. sometimes jump into it. You know, um, always have the mentality of, you know, what's the worst that could happen, you know. Mm -hmm. um, if... If, for example, it's too heavy on you, then you know you, you at least you know you've tried it, and you've yeah. you've pushed yourself and challenged yourself to do it. But mm -hmm. you would be even kicking yourself more if you end up in, let's say, an advanced age in your life, and you always wanted to try something, but you were always scared to venture into it because you just you just were um, you had some limiting thoughts uh, regards to it. But then at the end of your your career or in, uh, at an advanced age, it's too late by then, you know, like I should have tried this when I was young, you know. So you don't yeah, want to, you don't wanna end up in that situation. So in more often than not, it's best to, uh, if you know the outco outcome is beneficial for you and benef perhaps beneficial for others, um, just, just try and just do it. And then you'll be surprised uh, in most of the times, you'll be surprised where you end up, you know? So something something to uh, think about. <laughs> yeah, I want to build on, on that point as well. Uh, like what, what Hadith is saying, the Prophet says, Yassiru wa la right? Make it easy, don't make things difficult. And also the Prophet says, the deeds most beloved to Allah are those done consistently even if they are small. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I want to reflect a lesson from the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. One of the ways you want to start a habit is to make it easy. 
So for example, mm-hmm. if you want to start going to the gym, right? Don't imagine yourself working out like bench press and deadlifts, like 40 minute <laughs> workouts. Don't don't imagine yourself like that. Just 100 kilogram. Yeah, like 100 <laughs> kilograms. Just im- just go to the gym. Just bring your shoes. <laughs> go. You achieve the target for the day. Go home. <laughs> just do that consistently. <laughs> you you're going to come to a point where like, wait a minute, don't just come here. I might as well just work out like at least three minutes. That's it. Start three minutes. Ah, uh, you build on that habit. So let's relate that back with, for example, we want to build a habit for Quran, right? A lot of us, when it comes to memorizing Quran, we are in, immediately intimidated by the prospect of 30 Jews. Oh my God, no way. Yeah. Like, you know, if you look at it like that, you're never going to start. Forget about one step. What you want to do is, you want to break it down. I want to, my target this week, I just want to memorize one ayah. Come on, one ayah. Paha. Khalas, one ayah, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then next week, what? Ma anzalna alaikal Quran alitashqa. One week. Just do something something doable for you. And then, mm. you know, over time, you're going to realize that, you know what, this is too easy for me. And then you can go up one bit more. Ah, yeah. So yeah. That's the idea. Make it easy, you know, like, even like you want to recite Quran, that, that we, we spoke about this in, uh, I think, uh, Ramadan half time, I think. Uh, or was it gearing up for Ramadan? A lot of us put like a lot of pressure and reciting one juice per day. And it's for us, some, for some of us, it can be difficult if you haven't put on that habit. Yes. So what you want to do is just start really small, like just maybe a half a page per day. What is it? What's a half a page going to do? Just do it. Like just try. Like just try. if you do it consistently, you're going to reach a point where like oh half a page is too easy. Okay, I'm going to do like mm. three quarter page. And then eventually, like, that's when you, your muscle gets getting bigger, right? Yes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> And then if you if you're really consistent with the help of Allah, maybe like half juice, one juice per day. It's like you can do it easily outside of Ramadan. Mm. Yeah, even it's even if you try to. To, to teach your son to memorize. I I have this, um, uh, I try to prevent to tell my son, you need to uh, memorize these 10 verses. He would like, 10 verses, that's too much, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I always say to him, okay, okay. Uh, today, today we we just, we, we, we memorize just one verses. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And then he uh, read it. <laughs> Suddenly, he memorized three to four ayat. He ah, <laughs> doesn't realize uh, it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Life hack. <laughs> and and also, if, if you, let's say, you fail to meet your target, yeah? Even though you, if a small target, you fail. But that's okay. That's the sign of imperfection. Mm-hmm. So, imp- uh, but, but what we really need to do is we got to embrace imperfection. We uh, don't, don't make it as like our that. enemy, but take it as yes. like a, something we have to work on. Because yes, the yes, truth yes, is, yes. if you are perfect, then really there's nothing for you to improve. And there will yep. never be perfection in anybody. That's yeah? true. Yeah. 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 There's a hadith about that actually, you know. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if you did not commit sins, Allah will wipe out your entire existence and He will bring out a race who commits sins and then yeah. make tawbah. Right? MashaAllah. That's really, yeah, that's profound actually. Uh, it's, it, show, it shows that everyone will, everyone will, will sin. Everyone will sin and it's a human nature, right? It's human nature to fall it's short. It's human nature. Yeah, yeah, and there's yeah. another hadith, right? Uh, Uh, every son of Adam is a sinner. Yes. yes And correct. the best of sinner is those who repent. So every, every, does every mean a half or a third of it? No, it's the entirety everyone. of the... Yeah, everyone. Also, also, part, part of Allah's, Allah's, Allah's uh, mercy to that is like, a, if you sin, then only you are op- the doors for even bigger deeds is open. Yeah. Which is Taubat. Yeah. 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 Taubat yeah. is only yeah. open for the people who sin. And Taubat is a really big... Uh, mm. Ibadah that Allah loves. Yeah. Sahih. Subhanallah. Sahih. Masha'Allah. If Masha'Allah. you don't see, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> yeah. I want to I want to talk about embracing the perfect imperfection, which is a very good point. I read about this in the book Power of Habit. A lot of people when they try to quit habits, right? For example, you try to quit smoking, you try to quit drinking, you try to to quit something bad, maybe even social media, for example, right? You find yourself relapse once in a while. Now, a lot of people when you have this fixed mindset, you think that relapse means what? I just can't do failure, this. Failure, yeah, failure. Yeah. You, you, you immediately conclude you're a failure. But yeah. in fact, that is actually, when you actually relapse, it's not failure. It's actually information. It's you rec- you now, part of self-awareness, recognizing where your weak points are. So now, you know how to tackle that problem even more. Yeah. Right, you know? So, mm. so you look at it that way. Like, look at it as a, as a process. Look at it as a phase, which is actually another how on how we want to build a growth mindset. Never look at yourself as somebody who's fixed in whatever you are. You are always just going through a phase. By the way, mm. we, we have this mindset when we're in school, yeah? Like, for example, for me, engineering, studying engineering, graduate degree is very difficult. Oh man, I don't know. 
I don't know about you guys. Okay. Uh. Yeah. So, or you guys as well. Uh. Yeah. Even subjects which I enjoyed, like chemistry and maths. When I went to first year, I was like, oh man, this is crazy. Oh. Uh, even, um, they, they even call it calculus, not mathematics. Not <laughs> they, go, they go really specific, right? But like, so how like when you actually uh, try, try a little bit, a little bit, and, and, then, and then you realize that, oh, these are my weak points. And then you know where those weak points are, and maybe you won't get that distinction marks, but at least you know where, where to fix. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, we, we try to look at it this way and try to embrace the idea that failure, like, if you did, don't achieve something, it's actually you discovering something. There's a very famous quote by Thomas Edison, right? I haven't failed 10,000 times, I have just discovered 10,000 ways that don't work. Wow. Nice. <laughs> you approach life with this. Now, this happens to a lot to us, yeah? I, and this is including myself. When we try to, for example, try to wake up for tahajud. I try one night, I fail. I try one night, I fail. <laughs> Just not a morning person. Nah. Like, you know, we, we so quick to make this judgment on ourselves. But subhanAllah, if you look at it and say that I, I, have, I have tried two nights, I have discovered two nights that I did not succeed. It's a discovery. Mm. It's a different mindset shift now, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I remember a quote by Sufyan Aithori, I believe he says that I struggled, I, I made jihad against my nafs for 20 years to do tahajjud. The mm. first 10 years, I hated it. And only the, the, the second 10 years, I started tolerating it. And then after that, I couldn't live without it. So mm. 10 years is a long time. You tried twice and you would give long it long time. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, these examples are very good for, for big, bringing up that growth mindset. Yeah, just like doing this podcast, we just um, I think if if we have fixed mindset, we post two videos. So, hey, there's no viewers. Uh. Mm. <laughs> just yeah. two videos. Yeah. Oh, oh, there are viewers. Oh, my parents. <laughs> <laughs> it has been it has been five episodes, and the viewers are about all my parents. <laughs> For example, right? My parents watching twice. <laughs> Yeah, I like this one. So this is another how as well. Actually, uh, looking up to high benchmarks is one thing. But I find it very beneficial for us to get to the momentum of growth by also having people, examples of people who have overcome their, their, their limitations. Uh, mm. So this is, uh, I, for, for me, I find this very um, motivating. For example, people who, uh, like the idea is like this. When you watch them, you believe that if they can do it, so can I. So there's a there's a show called The Dean Show. I think you all heard of it, right? On the internet. Yeah. So they would interview people who were reverts, who used to live like this gangster life, these rappers who were criminals, who were, like they used to do really like things which are non-Islamic or even Muslims who live, lived very non-Islamic lifestyles. And so their in, inspiring stories of positive change make you believe that, wow, I think I can do this. So like uh, we, we spoke about this in the episode of um, building a relationship with the Quran. My wife works in the Tajweed Academy. So, so she told me like there are some sisters from Korea. The Korean tongue is very difficult to pronounce certain letters in, in Tajweed, yeah, in Arabic. It's very difficult. Mm. But there are sisters who reverts from zero from that Korean tongue who are now black belt level. Mashallah. They can Mashallah. achieve that. Like, are you kidding me? You cannot do that? Like, so examples like these like teach you, you know? And I, for me, the example is always best to take like the companions, people who are like these, like we said before, alcoholics, adulterers, idol worshippers, unlettered blind followers. Eventually, they become the best of the best of mankind. People will look at them and are like, wow, how can I be like you? Ashadu Allah, ilaha illallah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. they were the benchmarks, you know? So, Inspirational, yeah. Yeah, they were inspired. So, so this is the thing, right? And it doesn't have to be just religious benchmarks, right? Look at other dunya matters. For example, the author J.K. Rowling, I think we all heard the books, right? Uh, Harry mm -hmm. Potter. Mm -hmm. Did you know that she was rejected by 12 publishers? Yeah. Mm. Before she finally made it? So stories like this tell you like, oh, wow, I've only failed once. I gotta try. Like, keep and going. I, I, and perhaps maybe um, Colonel Sanders, the, the, the Colonel founder Sanders. of KFC. Oh yeah, what about he it? He tried to sell, he tried to sell his recipe to many, many restaurants, like hun, hun, over a hundred restaurants, but all rejected his recipe, if I'm not mistaken, maybe. Oh, maybe, really? Yeah, until, until he, he, until he found success by uh, having, you know, a KFC and being, becoming the mascot, ended up <laughs> becoming the mascot for his own, uh, you know, fast food chain, mashallah. Yeah, now you cannot enter a state in Malaysia that doesn't have KFC, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like in a rural area <laughs> in Sarawak, district. there's a, a KFC. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. And yeah, all these examples teach us, right? Like, for example, Jim Quick, the author of uh, the book, the, the 
Limitless, the book called Limitless, he used to have a learning impairment. And this mm. is a recent example for me. I, I really found this amazing. Uh, look it up. It's the winner of the 2015 Toastmasters public speaking contest. It's by a guy named Mohammad Qahtani. Oh, he gave a speech. This. Yeah. oh man, this guy is very inspiring. His speech yeah. is, the, the title is The Power of Words. This guy was the first Arab to ever become world champion in a public speaking contest in an Mashallah. international. First oh, Arab Mashallah. guy. But here's the thing. He's a, he gave another TED talk and says that his entire childhood, he was a stutter. Oh, just like Dr. Zakir Naik, right? Really? Wow. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Okay. Another okay. 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 Subhanallah. Mashallah. Yeah, subhanallah, you know, Muhammad Kahtani, he he grew up with the with the mindset. His teacher actually said to him, are you stupid or something? He remembers that until now. Oh. And uh, his teacher even said like, oh, I think you, this guy doesn't have any hope. Wow, mm-hmm. can you imagine growing up with that mindset? But he was mm-hmm. like, uh, he he was like, I want to push myself. I want to keep on exposing myself. And he tried. He was He got embarrassed in front of 500 students and he tried again. And subhanallah, look at it now, like, what, 20 years later, he won the international speaking contest, beating the Americans, the Europeans, the Australians, <laughs> all these people, you know? Mashallah. Remind that Toastmaster, everyone is learning public speaking. That's a yes. public speaking club. Club, you, yeah. Mashallah. You are the number one. Come yes. on, man. <laughs> wow. I think I think the most misconception many people have is that Toastmaster, Toastmaster is for those who master the art of public speaking. But actually, like, like brother, are they, are they club, huh? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to think that. Yeah. I used to think that. Oh, I see. But, uh, but as brother, as you said, everyone is trying to be better at that, right? Yeah. So, but he can do it. So hmm, stories sure. like this in general, like I want to remind all, this is one, one way we want to get to the growth mindset. Try to look for people who've overcome it. People who started less than you that can overcome it. And just to, like, to remind you like, oh, I believe I can. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah and you can find this in you know contemporary books in, in the Sirah especially in Sirah, there's yes. so many role models out there that you just have to look for them and perhaps look for your particular situation you will definitely find a role model in your situation in your particular circumstances I would say so when yeah. you just look in the Sirah uh, basically basically each and every one of the companion of the Prophet Wasallam, they started off you know much less than what we have now and yep. and, yeah. and with yeah. islam with with the the, the teaching that the prophet you know, taught them uh, you know the words of allah and the hadith that he uh, mentioned to to his companions subhanallah that made them you know have that yeah. that shift their paradigm right they shift their shift paradigm, their paradigm yeah. Yeah, yeah and have that growth mind, mindset I was thinking yeah. of uh, abu huraira like uh, brother faisal said abu, abu huraira oh, that's true that's true mashallah yeah yeah yeah, he he was he was one of the uh, ahli sufa, right? The the mm. ahli sufa is basically the companions who stayed in the masjid, right? They don't have their own homes, and they basically you know quite poor, on, mm, and yeah, quite poor. Yeah. But but you book you open the books of hadith, the books of the sayings of the traditions of the Prophet <laughs> You will see the most names mentioned is after Abu the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Of course, it's Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, Abu Huraira. Radiallahu anhu yeah, Abdul Rahman ibn Sakhr. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's, there's a narration about this. I read about the biography of the companions. I, I, I'm not, I haven't checked whether it's authentic. But apparently, there's one hadith where he actually complained to the Prophet Wasallam. he had bad memory. Do you guys know this? <laughs> and and Rasulullah Wasallam made dua <laughs> that he has good memory. And ever since then, he retains everything he listens from the Prophet Wasallam. Mashallah, mashallah. So mashallah. He, he came from a point where like he's, he had bad memory. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, amazing. That points out an amazing fact as well. You know, the Sahaba, what made them achieve the success, you know, is with the help of Allah. So their mm, adherence yeah, to the deen, yeah, yeah. their taqwa, their ikhlas are the like gold standard. Yeah. And therefore, Allah helps them in the matters of these, uh, these things. For example, just to pick out a point of benefit, right? Mm. When we open the books of hadith, now we always, as Brother Shami mentioned, it's uh, always narrated uh, from Abu Hurairah. And if you really think about it, from the time of the Prophet Wasallam until now, people have been um, benefiting from that knowledge. And you know, you imagine how much rewards that he is um, amassing, yeah, uh, so you know, even when he's not here anymore. So, uh, the knowledge is always connected uh, through him because he, uh, he strived and he narrated those, those uh, hadith. And up till now, you know, the, Allah placed the barakah in, in his effort that until now he's collecting rewards until 
you know, until Yao Mil Kiyama, you know. Yeah. So it's just imagine oh. that profound, amazing fact that if you do things for the sake of Allah, for uh, with the utmost utmost ikhlas, you know, with ihsan, you know, Allah will help you, and perhaps He would put the barakah in your efforts and make yeah. it lasting, just as how He would put the efforts of the Sahaba make it lasting un- until today. You know, people have yeah. been following them until today. So that's something profound. Yes, that we we use as our unfair advantage uh, as Muslims, right? Yeah, true. Awesome. Another how, if I want to add another one, this is so yeah. important to me. I really want everyone to hear this. How we can develop a growth mindset? This is crucial. We need to develop grit. We need to develop the emotional resilience and willpower to fight through the pain. Oh yeah. Mm. This is the key takeaway from the book, grit, the power of passion and perseverance. Like you see, this is what this differentiates the good from the great. I remember hearing a an in podcast interview that says that what makes a great athlete or Olympic Olympic gold medalist from just an average athlete is that there's going to be a point of time where you're going to feel like you want to give up. Like it's so stressful, it's so painful that you want to give up. So the good athletes they give up at that point, but the great athletes they they push even further. So I'm I'm saying this because why? In our journey towards improvement, you're gonna face a lot of setbacks. You're gonna face you're gonna face sometimes you're gonna you might you might fail once. You might do certain things you don't see the results. You might get mocked at. People might yeah. make fun of you. And you see, Subhanallah, we have to recognize that every journey that you have towards self improvement, you're gonna expect a certain level of stress. You have to go out of your comfort zone for you to improve. Mm, that's the thing. You have to recognize this. People want like, I want to be smart. I want to memorize Quran, but I want to kind of like lay on my couch and watch Netflix all day. That's not gonna happen, my friend. You're gonna have to put some effort to it. Like the stress outside your comfort zone. That's where the learning happens. So there's a nice and interesting theory here. You can look it up. It's called Yerkes Dodson theory. I think we spoke about this. Ah, right? yes, yes, right? we spoke about this before. Stress versus performance. Yes. Like <laughs> if it's too, there's a certain optimal amount that 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 stress gives you that level of performance. If it's too low in stress, you won't be challenged. You won't improve. If it's mm. too too high stress, the gra- graph starts to drop. Right. That's when you get yeah. too much anxiety. Then you get paralyzed and you don't want to improve anymore. So yeah. we have to like we have to develop this grit. And why I say that is, is because a lot of us, this is the problem about Malaysians. We are so soft-hearted. Subhanallah. You know, there's a there's a phrase for it, right? Hati tissue. Koya, koya. Uh, koya. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We're so sensitive, right? When, when people give us feedback, Akhi, you know, you need to brush up this one. Oh, we, we, we get offended, man. We will leave group, yeah. you know, we will start yeah, attacking yeah. the guy. You know, yeah. we 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 have this problem like we don't approach it in a way that this is something that's useful for me. Like I may say, this is a gift for me. You know, like we, when people Michelle. disagree with us, we straight away go like, oh, like we, I, like I, I don't, I, I don't want, I unfriend this guy. We declare war. Ah, uh, anak berlepas diri. Like yeah. <laughs> I release myself <laughs> from this guy. Brothers and sisters, if you have this attitude, I'm so sorry. You will never achieve a growth mindset. I'm so sorry to lay it out on you. You have to develop this grit. Right, you have to develop this emotional resilience to accept constructive feedback. It hurts a lot. I receive a lot of this stuff. I gave a public spe- uh, speech once at the TSP, and I thought this was the most difficult assignment of my life. And the only comment I received, the first comment was, "This guy is not qualified." That was that oh, was really, really offended, mm. man. <laughs> I think Shami knows this, right? Shami. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen this as well. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Yeah, it's, it's oh, no, he, he said he said like uh, something like. I'm more like a motivator, right? Like yeah, this guy is just a motivator to me. I'm hello, motiv- more- <laughs> hello. Even that motivator is much better than just sitting behind the desk and commenting, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> much better. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, Hanul, I, I, there's so, so many uh, like instances in my life. I, this is one thing I had to overcome. I'm not saying this is something that I'm naturally had. I, I, I get offended a lot when I people used to give me feedback. This is something I had to jihad with my own self. I had oh, to confront. Too, bro. Oh, you too, huh? So, yeah, Subhanallah. Mm-hmm. This is a this is a struggle, and I'm not saying that I've mastered it, but I've gone. Uh, I'm less lousy than I was. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so really, this is the you know you know this interesting. I read about this in the in the book, uh, barking up the wrong tree. It's about how the success principles in life. So you know they they said that what kind of occupations, what kind of careers make the best Navy SEALs? Try to make a guess. Who are the kind of people who make the best mm. Navy SEALs? I think I don't know if I spoke about this. No, you haven't. Yeah. No, no, no. First time I've heard about it. Uh, take a who, guess. who would be the best? Huh? Uh, Competent people and uh, trustworthy people. 
uh, vulnerable people. Put put a career to it. Like is it engineers uh, or okay. doctors okay. or lawyers or policemen or which profession would have grit? <laughs> Ah, uh, you got the right idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you got the yeah. right idea. So the answer is this: <laughs> brace yourselves. The best Navy SEALs people are used car salesmen. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because these guys face rejection every single day, every multiple single times day. per day. They have to go to bed at night with the fact that I've been rejected 20, 30 times, and I have to wake up tomorrow again to face another 20, 30 rejections. Oh. This is really <laughs> tough. These are the people who go who pass Navy SEALs. Why? Because a Navy SEALs training is so tough. You will doubt yourself. You want to give up. You want many, many times. And no matter how fit you are, there's no correlation. You are super fit, but if you don't have the grit, you're gonna quit. So this mm. is this is so Im- like I, I find it's like so mind blowing. Are you kidding me? Car salesmen make Navy SEALs like <laughs> what? Like this is doesn't make sense, right? So yeah. subhanallah, this is the lesson. I heard this from a Rocky movie many years ago. Right? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> in this in this character in this in this scene, the the, the character uh, played by Sylvester Stallone, right? So Rocky Balboa says. I'm gonna impersonate him. This is really bad. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you. It's about how hard you ha- can get hit and keep moving forward. It's Ooh. how much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. Yeah. Take this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, subhanallah, it's, it's, it's a movie phrase, but there's a lot of truth to it when you look at all these things about grit, right? It's about how much you can get hit. And still get up again like a boss. Masha That's the key Allah. to the growth mindset. This is how we Malaysians. I'm so sorry. I'm saying this as a Malaysian myself. Right? I'm not. Mm. I'm not removing myself from the accountability. Right? We and have we to be collectively admit it. Admit this as well. <laughs> this is <laughs> perhaps something that we always have to continually improve. Can on, I share right? something about this? About because I think like how how you actually want me to to build resilience? Yeah? Because I think like the, the reality that life is always going to be full of tests and challenges. Yeah. Yeah. And these challenges will come to you whether you are working hard to achieve some goals or even you're lying on your couch watching TV all day. You will always be tested and challenged that you will that will come your way. Sahih. 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 So true. If you're under the protection of your mom 24/7, you will still have challenges. So might as well yeah, you take a challenge true. that can actually improve you. Yeah. Mm. Ah. yeah. Either way, you always have challenges are gonna come to you. Might as well do some challenge that can actually improve you. Wow. And then when that challenge comes to your way, yeah, yeah always yeah. have God's have, have good thoughts to Allah. That Allah Qadar is always the best. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't that challenge you out of no, no hikmah. There's always a hikmah for you to grasp. Mm. And then the, the worst, the worst thing, if you can't really think of it, the worst thing is erases your, that challenge will erase your sins. At least the the very least, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. this mindset is amazing, actually. Like you know, actually we are in this dunya to be tested, right? This is the purpose of why we are in this dunya. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I mean, that's true. Exactly, the reality right? of that alone can induce you to have the growth mindset, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so it's always something that we can always go back to and you know think about uh, when when life, when when you are down, when when you are not having your way, you always remember that you know sometimes you are you are not having the the good things, but it will inshallah be better. And in some it's it's like a wheel, you know. It's sometimes you are up and sometimes you are. Uh, down so so it's something that is the nature of life you know so hey, subhanallah you triggered something really powerful yeah. there's a hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked who are the people who are That's tested me. with the most trials and tribulations the prophet oh. sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the prophets the prophets, the prophets. Right. Yeah. there's a very important lesson from this hadith the higher your iman the higher your tests think about it this way right a first grade exam with a fifth grade exam which one's more difficult it's not a trick question right it's <laughs> <laughs> The fifth grade, the exam obvious, course, right? Course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now, if you're going to face something difficult in life, you might lose your job, or maybe you might go through a difficult, uh, maybe a, a divorce, or mm. maybe whatever it is, like maybe somebody in the family passed away. If you find mm. this difficult, this hadith, if you keep this in mind, you have the optimism to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that Inshallah, I hope this is a sign that my iman is slightly more now. So that's why Allah wants to test me a bit more because I know at the same time Allah says in the Quran, La yukallifullahu nafsan illa wusaha. Allah will not burden a person more than what He can bear, and Allah knows I can bear this, and this is difficult on me. Maybe this is a sign that I'm better than I was yesterday. Wow, Mashallah. this is growth mindset, and it's and it's. Peak, man. This is the finest, man. Subhanallah. Mashallah. And, 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 and also, never ever think that, that whatever you got is a privilege. Yeah? 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think we should do it again. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right? It's to hold yourself accountable. Like these activity groups. Join Facebook groups. But of course, here's the thing, right? You want to make sure these groups actually interact. What happens is people are like, when they slack off, they like keep quiet. Yeah. The, be, uh, be in the background. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Observe, observe. observe. The, the group around me is doing fine without me. You know, like it's, so you won't hold yourself accountable. So accountability is something key in in growth mindset because we've done this when we are accountable. So if you find yourself slipping away into a slump, then you have to find a means to make yourself accountable. Mashallah, mashallah. And also, like another point, to always ground ourselves to the fact that we are always um, accountable in whatever we do, and perhaps. Um, to improve ourselves uh, all the time, a good way to do is also to to uh, look and reflect and reflect regularly on the Quran. This is mm. the best thing that that always reminds us of our purpose in life, yes. of what we should do and what we should not do. And and apart from the the accountability groups, that's also an amazing part as well. Personally, you also need that uh, reminder on your personal uh, introspective level uh, and it will re- reinforce your reasons why you are doing the things that you do and reinforces um, that we are actually journeying towards the akhirah and everything that you do in the dunya is either an investment, a good investment or a bad investment. So just to always tie us down to that foundation uh, it's always good to, you know, do reflection on the Quran, do tadabbur on the Quran, because this is something very powerful that ties us back to our sense of purpose. So this is another thing that also uh, gives a accountability on a personal level. Yeah, true. Mm, mashallah. The self-reinforcing mechanism, continuous yeah. one, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. Mashallah. So I think we've covered so many points, mashallah. Uh, barakallahu feekum. Uh, I benefited barakallah. so much from today's session and I think it's one of our most liveliest session to date <laughs> mashallah so um, uh, unfortunately we've we've uh, reached the end of the episode perhaps we have, if we have more points or we, if the viewers have more suggestions on what we should cover in terms of the growth mindset nurturing the growth mindset you can also uh, comment or um, give some suggestions to us on what you would like for example, for us to discuss what's interesting, what perspective, because we might not cover every angle. So um, that's something that uh, would be interesting um, from your participation. And as for now, uh, we would like to uh, get um, each of the brothers' closing remarks, the concluding remarks on what you derive from today's session and what are the important takeaway points that you... um, you found um, beneficial and you found interesting from today's uh, uh, session. So, inshallah, um, let's go firstly with Brother Amir. Okay, Afadal. alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, yeah, mashallah. So, one of the uh, points where I gathered the early part of our podcast was uh, from Brother Shami's point that the uh, elements of yet and now. So, he, when Brother Shami mentioned about the example the author gave, um, Mr. X, about the, the, the question, the grading in school, where uh, not so performing student was great as not yet when, when he didn't meet the, the, the high standards, yeah? So not yet, it's, it's, a, it's a very powerful phrase because it leaves a lot of room for growth for, the, for that mm-hmm. individual, correct, yeah? Yes, mm-hmm. and, yeah. However, that, that begs the question, yeah? That, so when does the yet finish? Mm. Is yet infinite that doesn't, it doesn't finish? And, and when does now start then? Yeah, when is yet, yeah. when is now? But is, if, if, it's con- if it's continuously in the yet phase, then when is now? So the, 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 the Salaf reminded us that, that this world is a place that you implement things, you execute things without any accounting. And the next life is the place that you do, your account, do the accounting without we doing any implementation or execution. Meaning this is the life for you to do Amal Saleh without any hisab by, 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 by Allah. And the next life will be the, 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 the phase that we do the, the, Allah will do his up on us and we mm. cannot do any more Amal Saleh. Yep. Yeah. Mm. Hence, we need to strive in this life until the very end, until the time that we meet Allah and we will never, ever, never, ever think that we have done enough. Just like how Inu Rajab mentioned that the, the, the prize predecessors, the Salaf, they used to think that all their good deeds are actually worthless, worth nothing. Mm. It's not accepted by Allah. They, ha- they are constantly having that in their back head, at the back of their mind. 
So they never sit, they never rest to the point that that uh, another example, like Imam Ahmad's son was asked, uh, asked his dad, like, dad, I mean, you, you work hard every time, yeah? you work hard to, to, uh, to, uh, in Amal Saleh. When do you actually rest? Yeah? Then Imam Ahmad told his son, uh, we rest when, when we, when the first, when, when, we put, when we place our feet in Jannah, that's when we rest. Nice Till then, everything is, is, is all hard work. It's all mujahada. It's all striving. So yeah. yet, if I, if I just take this to a saying from, of, of, our, of the scholars, so how I come, how I relate yet and now is yet is everything that we have right now till the point of death, and now is the starting from the point of death moving forward. So right. that's where now is when your true success or your true punishment, true failure will come to come to light. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the yet that we have. Do not make full use of it. Strive for it, and always, always strive for continuous improvement. So that's what I have for today. MashaAllah, Barakallah Fikum. So basically, <laughs> don't be complacent and you know that your journey uh, only ends or the yet ends when you leave this world, right? Because at any moment in time, the shaitan can come into and whisper something and you might be, you know, there is no guarantee for anyone that they will have a guaranteed good ending, right? So yeah. something that we always have to remember. Exactly. Barakallah uh, fikum. So uh, next uh, we would have uh, brother Shahmi. Tafadil, ya Sheikh. Okay, Jazakumullah khaira. I just want to bring our attention inshallah to to uh, the reality that we face today. So many, so many people, you know, are involved in corruption and so many people are having, you know, su'ul adab or su'ul akhlaq, meaning bad adab and bad, bad akhlaq. Nowadays that it seems like the only thing that we can do is, you know, to comment, to comment on their wrongdoings uh, from behind, from behind our screen, you know, just being keyboard. You might have people, you know, not, are not abiding to a particular set of uh, standard operating uh, procedures, SOP, mm -hmm. uh, involving the current COVID situation. And then all yeah. you, you got to do is, you know, just... You know, or you know, see, this is the people we. This is this is the uh, backward thinking people. You know, stuff like this, you know, hurtful comments. Right. But do you know that you, the one who is typing, you are also a part of the community, mm. and if you, if 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 the community, you know, uh, is only consists or comprise only of people like you and like the people that you are commenting uh, yes. at, right? You, you know, lashing at. So, so just imagine when will when will this world? The, just just imagine when will our community change? Mm. Okay, so the, the 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 hard reality, the bitter pill to swallow is this: you have to start with yourself. You have to have that self awareness. You have to want to have that growth growth mindset, because mm. this is sure. inshallah the only way that one the, the community can flourish and to become a better community. And as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Inna Allah la yugayru ma bi, bi qawmin hatta yugayru ma bi anfusihim. We, we often heard a verse um, uh, every now and then, right? Allah azza wa jalla, he said, he will not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, indeed he will not change the condition of people until they change what is within themselves. How true is this? If you don't see that you are a part of the problem, then uh, uh, lil asaf, or unfortunately, <laughs> subhanallah, I, I don't know where, where, where we're heading. May Allah, may Allah uh, grant us safety, and uh, you know, uh, grant the safety Ameen. in this world and the, the hereafter. Ameen. And also ponder upon Ameen. when you're reading the Quran, ponder upon the verses of the Quran because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in men in, in the Quran, one of the central themes is uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put a stark contrast between those who have who he has mercy upon and those who uh, his uh, his rage is upon, right? Just just look in yeah. Surah Al-Fatiha. We, we recite this every day, daily, every 17 times a day. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the end of the, uh, the surah, He said, uh, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ So this is the first group of people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed His mercy by uh, giving them ni'mah, by giving them all, all the virtues, right? صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَغَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِينَ And the, the second group, the second and the third group is the stark contrast to the first group. Those who earn Allah's anger and those who Allah made them, you know, um, stray from the right path. So if we look 
the central themes of the Quran is revolving around these two groups. The one who Allah has mercy upon mm. them and the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reached upon them and who's caused them to be uh, to, to stray from the straight path. And if you look, you have the dabbur, the dabbur, you have you think deeply, you read the tafsir, understand the meanings of the Quran, you will see that the people whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed uh, his uh, mercy and virtue upon are those who have growth mindset, are those who have this mindset, who, mm-hmm. who constantly have, um, you know, want to be better and who constantly, if, uh, if, he, if he sin, he admits his sin and he makes tawbah and he promised to himself that he will never go back to the previous sin that he did. And if he fell, he falls, uh, you know, um, falls in the same sin again or another sin, he will not give up. He will just he will he will keep on striving on that same path until God knows when. Until Allah Subhanahu wa Taala makes him, uh, you know, pulls takes his soul away from his body. Mm. So this is this is something we need to reflect about, uh, reflect on. Like it starts with you. It starts with you, and connect with the Quran, and you will understand that. Uh, you will understand the, uh, what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala um, ultimately wants from us. That's all I have. Barakallahu fiqum. Masha'Allah, fiqum barakallah. You mentioned an interesting point there, like in regards to perhaps um, what's happening in our social media nowadays. Mm. There's a lot of pointing fingers and blaming. You no, know, the government is not <laughs> yeah, doing yeah, the right yeah, thing. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But you know, um, one thing that a lot of people are missing the point is that. You should just look into yourself first. How can you be a better? Um, how can you change yourself first, and then become a positive influence on society? Mm. And that's and that's you know that's how uh, if if it's done within the Sharia, that's how the uh, the help of Allah comes to our previous generations so, and yeah. previous uh, you know. So actually, this is the the recipe for success. But people are always missing the point. They want a shortcut. They, they just say, okay, the government is this, this, this. But in reality, you're not solving anything because Allah says that, um, uh, if, just co- correct me if I'm wrong, that you are granted the leaders. Not Allah says, I think it's from the hadith, right? You are granted um, leaders from, um, like, yeah, as, uh, as you are, right? Fadid yeah, I think it, it it was the the, the saying of um, Ali radiallahu anhu. Oh, okay, okay. Talib, okay. All right. Oh, the leader and the people. The leader is a reflection of the people to that yes. effect, right? Yep. Right, right. Yes, right. Yep. Okay. yes. Okay. okay. So that's, that's an amazing point in the sense that you know, start with yourself, have that growth mindset, and mm. you know, if if our society everyone does it, you know, perhaps uh, you'll be surprised. You'll, you'll be surprised. Be Allah, Allah's help comes to those who rectify themselves. You know. So you know, this, you know, just a side side comment on this. Like, if yeah. you tell them to work on themselves, a lot of the excuse they will give is like, "Oh, if I do it, but the rest of the people do it, what's the mm-hmm. point?" Mm-hmm. So they use that as an excuse to abandon it. But I want to ask this question: If everybody thinks like this, society will never change. Never change. Mm-hmm. If you're going to think like I, I, if, if my change doesn't matter. If everyone thinks like that, it's never going to change. Yeah. On the other hand, if you say it's okay if other people don't do it, I'm going to do it because I, I because this is between me and Allah. And that's the most important thing I'll be answerable for. Yes. If okay. everybody thinks like that, then you have change in society, isn't it? Yeah, oh those are two, two different things that we need to distinguish because uh, if you focus on yourself, like to better yourself, and then inshallah Allah will make other people follow your footstep. And that yeah. will inshallah, you know, uh, spark that, you know, um, that viral, sorry to use that uh, term, <laughs> <laughs> that, that uh, you know, um, how do you say this? Um, people, other people will be influenced by the, the good things yeah. that the, the change that they see in you, yeah. Yeah. as opposed to you changing yourself because you want other to change. That's yeah. not. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the wrong intention. Right? Wrong intention. Yeah, the the exactly. intention, ah. intention is wrong. Okay, can yeah. I just add something on that? Like yeah, when you sure. when you want to be that change and, and you are and, and you are you are fixed to a, to a, a goal that you wanna that you wanna achieve. Yeah, be authentic about that. That like, doesn't mm. matter if nobody follows it. Correct. One, yeah, one, yeah. one yeah, example that's that's that we can take from yeah. from recently. I mean, it's not the it's not too long ago, like 400, 500 years years ago was Sheikh Muhammad at Tamimi. He was mm-hmm. giving dawah to make tawhid to 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 eliminate shirik when yeah. the whole Arab land was full of shirik. Ooh, yeah, they yeah, say yeah. Cairo had one thousand grave that people go for worship to make dua. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. And right now you don't have any any of that. You yeah, have but not that many, not one thousand in just Cairo. But he was like a one man, a man on a mission. He just continuously. Giving the same, uh, this the, the same dawah 
over and over again without uh, uh, without giving up. Yeah. So be authentic. Yeah. If you if you really truly believe on that on the goal that on the on the intention on the goal that that, that you are you embark on, just just uh, soldier on. Just just uh, just focus. Yeah. That's right. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and focus and, focus on the effort. Yeah. Let the results come from Allah's barakah. If you are yeah. sincere, mm-hmm. if you are ikhlas, Allah will bring the barakah. Yeah, so ultimately, don't, this is tawakkul. This is the essence of tawakkul. Having yes. reliance on Allah. This is it. Yeah. And, and just look at the results of the da'wah of the sheikh, right? A whole generation, a whole country is upon oh, yeah. strong tawheed. And at mm-hmm. the same time, you know what Allah gives as blessings to them? MashaAllah, you can just, you can just uh, look at it nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. Can, that's can, one point. Can I end on one quote by sure. Inshallah by sure. Ibn Jauzi rahimahullah ta'ala yeah. He said this in in Al-Ta'if uh, Al-Ta'if uh, fil, wa, fil wa'id He said Endure the nights of hardship because if you look through the eye of patience you shall see the dawn of reward Indeed the lofty ranks can be attained only by undergoing hardship Did you not notice the thorns growing beside the roses? Subhanallah mm. So I just Allah. think that you know, <laughs> hardship wow. is necessary. Hardship mm. is necessary. So don't don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when you encounter uh, mm. uh, an obstacle. Right? It is a necessary yeah. path for you to grow. Yeah, that's the great okay. mindset, right? <laughs> Mashallah. Uh, so this rose among thorns thing is uh, said by the salaf also. Huh? Mashallah. 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 In, a, in a different <laughs> in a different perspective. <laughs> in oh, a good way. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Subhanallah. Mashallah. So uh, next up we have uh, brother Abdul Aziz Tafaddal ya akhi Tafaddal Okay I just um, okay I love to talk with um, high inspiring people no matter any topic religion business or whatever So I remember I have discussion with a friend is an yeah social media influencer with a great number of followers mashallah oh. In his writing He always have this inspiring way to write, to inspire people, to have this optimistic about business, have this growth, growth mindset, seeking knowledge about business. And yeah, he have this side income of side more, a great side income, more than his working salary. He, wow. His side income is, I think is two or three times his working salary. But... I I don't remember somehow our discussion leads to this topic of memorizing the Quran. So what surprised me with his optimistic and his growth mindset when it's come to Quran memorization, he said that our brain is rusty. It's difficult for us. Uh, we, he give up already, yeah? Yeah, give up already. And and he he just said that's why we should encourage our children to memorize the Quran, just like Brother oh. Faisal mentioned just now. <laughs> we should just give it, give it to our child. Outsource, so, huh? I, yeah, I don't have any comment about anything about this one. But my point is that we may have growth mindset on certain areas, and maybe uh. not in some areas. But it comes it comes back to our priority, right? Why we want to prioritize anything that we want. So yeah, if we, what do we want to prioritize in our life? If we really want to memorize the Quran, no matter how, what what age you are, you will find a way, right? Yeah. And if we want to have a growing business or to to grow our income or anything, but you will find a way. But the question, the question now is, are we growing to the path of Allah, or are we growing oh, and die, finish? Right. Wow. Mashallah. That's the key, right? You are uh, what's the purpose of life? You are journeying mm. towards of Allah. I mean, you can put your um purpose on you know wealth or whatnot, but is that the real real end goal that you want when you know that for a fact that when you reach the grave, you will let go of all these things? Mm. Right? Subhanallah. Subhanallah. <laughs> So yeah, I, I re- totally resonate with what uh, Brother Abdul Aziz mentioned that um, what's the key to your purpose? You know, then then once you know that, uh, just you do it for the sake of Allah, you are growing, then you have that growth mindset and everything you do in that growth mindset is along those lines and in, yeah. in that boundary, right? 
ما شاء الله ما شاء الله, الله. بارك الله فيكم آه، اوكي نيكست وان آه، اخي فيصل تفضل اوكي ان شاء الله شيء uh, hearing conclusions from brother Aziz and the rest it remind me of one very important hadith the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was asked mm. who are the best of mankind and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says are those who live long and those deeds are good and on the other hand he said that the worst of mankind are those who lives a long life and those deeds are bad now think about it this way right allah gave us a certain number of years so you have to look back last year am i better than i was than i am today am i better off today than i was last year put it that way because if you are on that trajectory of improvement continuous improvement then a long life would only make you better and better but if you're worse than last year then maybe if allah gives you more life you're on the trajectory of becoming the worst of mankind so this is like this hadith brings a lot of depth to this idea about growth mindset yeah like what do we want to really achieve in life what do you want to, what do you, what you've invested in this life subhanallah So anyway, um, actually, I really enjoy this topic. I, there's a lot of top, there's a lot of uh, points that I, I maybe we'll delegate it to another time. I have like a, a section on as leaders or as parents, how can we develop growth mindset in our children? So maybe inshallah we'll speak about yeah, that. Inshallah, can can do that specific, specific topic, right? Topic. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, I'm I'm really gonna I'm gonna enjoy that one. Um, <laughs> it's actually a really important point. Also, I I left out, which is how to go growth mindset. It's through physical exercise. Oh, oh how i don't want to say i'll leave okay. it next time keep it, right keep it <laughs> <laughs> stay tuned because does it, does it involve watching rocky uh, <laughs> <laughs> no but it involves doing something what rocky does maybe uh. <laughs> yeah that oh man this is really mind blowing i'm just going to give you like a bit of hints about what it is like basically exercise can actually make you develop faster in your brain i'm just going to leave it at that yeah. look it up and maybe we'll touch on it on the next episode so anyway Inshallah. This is my conclusion, right? Now that I've learned about what the growth mindset is, because when I learned this concept, like only recently, the past couple of years, actually those those developments that I've had, I didn't even realize it until a certain point. I look back and like, wow, like subhanallah, like this is a lot of achievements. So when I now that I understand this concept more, I have a very different paradigm on how I look at my skills and my capabilities. Whatever I think that I'm not good at, I don't consider myself to be bad at it or lack of talent at it. I'm. I just think that I'm not good at it yet. So, for example, I, I my gaps now are in Arabic and, and giving da'wah in person. I I used to think that I'm just not good at this, but now I think of it as I'm not good at it yet. I know I can be good. I just need to put my mind to it, and put practice to it. Find the right find the right environment to it, and just uh, you know like uh, get on that path of improvement. I can do it if I want to. It's just a choice. Right. Also, I know that I'm certain skills that I'm really bad at. For example, I'm really bad at business and investment. I, I used to. My wife used to criticize me like, "You don't have this entrepreneurial mind." So I used to tell her, "You know what? I'm a risk taker, not a risk taker." Right? You know what I mean? So I used to delegate like, oh, "I'm just like this," right? But now I look at it differently. Now I look at it as like this. I I know I can be good at it if I want to, but it's just that I don't feel like that's my priority right now. My priority is in many other things in my life, and so I put that as my not even my priority. So I'm deliberately not improving that. That's a different. There's a different mindset to like. Oh, like I'm not talented in it, right? Mm. So even when it comes to skills, like I, I know, like in my job right now, I'm still struggling with a lot of skills at the workplace. For example, the time management with my new job, right? My new my new role right now as a manager. I'm really struggling, man. So how are like which which meetings do I go to? How do I divide my time fairly with subordinates? How do I set targets with them? How do I manage my technical work? It is really overwhelming. But at the same time, now that I know the growth mindset is there, I know I got this. I know I can do this. I know I'll make mistakes. So what I'll do is I'll just tell people, I'm sorry, guys. I made a mistake. I'll make a mistake again. So please bear with me. Please give me feedback. That that's very comforting, as opposed to like if I don't know the growth mindset, I'm like you know try to keep a straight face. Like yeah. I'm okay. Like that's very stressful, you know. Like you're you're pretending. Mm. So now, mm. like beating instead of beating myself up for it, I know. Like, okay, I'm just gonna try a bit by bit by bit. Mm. And even when it comes to akhlak, I know there are certain aspects of akhlak which I still need to work on. I still many many of that. But I know now I can be better at it. You know, like I have that confidence that Allah can make me improve if I just have that right training and that right knowledge. So it's a different paradigm now. 
and like even um, so 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 now and also just a side note like since I live my life with a growth mindset now I also become a much more optimistic person I like I look at other people now and I know what they're capable of I look at what they can be rather than who they are right now and this makes me a much more pleasant person because when you have that fixed mindset you're like ah oh, this guy is useless like you know you, mm. you kind of create yeah. that in your head like if they are maybe yeah, you yeah. see them procrastinating say ah oh, this guy is a pro- procrastinator you start giving labels on them yeah. but if you are a person who's trying you know that oh i can relate to that struggle i used to be where he was it's a different paradigm now isn't it that's mm, my source of optimism mashallah yeah so now i genuinely believe that everyone can, has what it takes everyone has the minimum requirements to become the best person that you can be as a husband as a friend as a worker as a colleague as a dai as a member of the ummah you have all the necessary skills you all meet minimum requirements this is very empowering this is very motivating but this is also very scary because now you know that if you don't improve it's all on you <laughs> you have to make the choice now right so guys listen to me wallahi listen to me i'm saying this because i love you for the sake of allah whatever happened in the past your upbringing your trauma your slow start get rid of it stop giving yourself excuses stop you know stop making excuses why you want to be in the fixed mindset what's done is done qadar allah ma sha fa'al it's done by the will and the wisdom of allah what matters is what you do right now right here right now where you want to go forward moving because you will meet allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the choice that you make now that's that's maybe that's all that is enough to take care of all those past mistakes right you have yeah. what it takes you have the requirements to be awesome you just have to take responsibility take ownership of what allah give you stop making excuses stop feeling feeling sorry for yourself pick yourself up and take the first steps towards achieving this greatness mashallah that's powerful akhi uh, very powerful advice barakallahu fikum fikum So I, I guess I just want to end it out on a note. I, I recall uh, in our conversation that Shami mentioned um, that the more you know Allah, the more Allah, because you know, Allah knows all the subtle subtleties about you and what you don't know about yourself, the more that Allah will open your eyes towards how you can improve yourself and to become better versions of yourself. I mean, to become better in every aspect of your life, right? So so the key is knowing Allah um and uh, remembering Allah and Allah and in essence this is basically tawfiq right the ability and the guidance granted by Allah that he guides you towards uh the best things in your life that you should um uh, perhaps the goal growth mindset as well and it's important in every step that we embark on that we start by asking Allah for guidance you know you relying upon him in full and you know actually this gives the comfort that then whatever we embark on whatever we decide to grow on uh, in nurture in the growth mindset and as long as it's permissible in the confines of our deen inshallah you will get the guidance from allah and that and you get and get you will get the best outcome from allah and with this mentality and with this approach you will always win you know if allah grants you more then it is a blessing but if allah prevents you from something it's also a blessing because allah wants to give the best for his slaves who uh, are always in obedient to him and remember him True, yeah so so uh, this will give you you know relying upon allah you know you have to make your effort the essence of tawakkul is you you have to make your effort uh, but at the same time the the result you rely 100% upon allah for for whatever your effort results in this is the best that allah uh, will give you so have this in mind and inshallah this will give you the comfort that whatever you are embarking on and if you have this approach it gives you the comfort that um it is always good for you you know um the growth mindset in all areas of your life and if you apply this this uh, mindset it's always good for you because allah is always um helping you along your way So this is something um that we can inculcate so because sometimes we might feel that we are scared to do something you know but um <laughs> that True. that that limits us but what what will give you an edge towards overcoming that hurdle is relying upon Allah and you know that um whatever you do uh, inshallah Allah will guide you as long as you are keeping your duty to him and being obedient to him so this is something um that can help you along your way in inculcating um 
this growth mindset uh, so that you are not scared to make uh, the moves to be better in all aspects of your life. Yeah. So um, I think, uh, mashallah, this today's topic is very a very powerful one, and I I gain so much benefit for him, uh, from it. Barakallahu fiikum. Jazakumullah khairan. And we hope you also gain a lot of benefit from it and do share your experiences, your thoughts, your your um, suggestions to us. We would love to hear from you guys because, you know, we want to have a community of high achievers that um, always continually reminds ourselves that we are always here to improve for the sake of Allah. And, um, you know, uh, this is something that we want to achieve through this project. So do respond and do do give us your suggestions. We would love to always, we love to always hear your feedback. You know, all your feedback, uh, just to let you know, the team is always, uh, you know, um, motivated by all the feedback that you give, all the comments that you give uh, yeah, on true, social media. Yeah. This is amazing, mashallah. So um, with that, uh, we hope that you derive uh some benefits from today's talk and perhaps this will be a change for us collectively uh, to be become better as an ummah to become better uh, individually and collectively so we end this uh, this session subhanakallahumma wa bika subhanakallahumma wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh well, that is all for this week's episode. Jazakumullah khaira and thank you so much for tuning in. If you have benefited from this episode, don't forget to share it. Also, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below to show your support. And finally, if you have any suggestions, feedback or questions, you know, do get in touch with us via our uh, Facebook and Instagram accounts. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. See you next time around. Barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.